So I thought the new Mac Mini and the new MacBook Air would be kind of the perfect synthesis of portability and power. Power at home and portability when I'm on the go. And you know, that still is the case, but I decided not to go that direction anymore. Don't have those anymore, and I'm back on the MacBook Pro. This is the computer I use every single day to do pretty much all of my work. And although it's not perfect, I still love this thing. So I figured like what I did with the Pixel and the iPad Pro, I'm gonna show you what's on my Mac. And I don't think I've done one of these in a really long time. So this is my 15 inch MacBook Pro. And besides the sticky B key that I really need to get fixed, this thing is a workhorse for me. I'm also probably one of the few that actually really likes the touch bar and the keyboard. I find them both easy to use and actually useful, you know, besides the sticky key. So overall, I have really enjoyed using this computer. But let's get to what I actually use. It's all pretty much apps and utilities that I use to create, and then I use the web to consume. Overall, I actually don't have a ton installed here. Now, by far, the app I use the most is Final Cut Pro 10. I started editing years ago in Premiere, but now I've been switched over for a few years and I just love it. The performance and fluidity makes my job easier, and I've found that I can do pretty much everything I need in one program. This is really nothing new, but I definitely recommend trying it if you haven't already. Now, even though I use Final Cuts, I still have other programs here to help with that. I recently switched to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and with that came DaVinci Resolve. This is another video editor, but what is great about it and what I use it for is the coloring tools. This is about as good as it gets, and it gives you all the tools that you would ever need to make your videos look exactly the way you want. I don't use this for every single project, but it really comes in handy, and also it's free, so there's really no reason not to have it. And then I have the Adobe Suite. I mainly use Lightroom and Photoshop, although like I said in my iPad video, most of my photo editing is now done on my iPad, but for larger projects, it's nice to have the programs here since I can use them alongside the other programs I'm already using. It just makes the workflow a little better. Now, getting away from creation apps, I also love 1Password. This lets me keep all of my logins with me, which makes everything just easier. And I definitely recommend checking this out if you haven't already. It's been out for a while, but it is a go-to. I also have been using a utility called Magnet. This lets me snap the windows to different parts of the screen. Now, this is something that you've been able to do in Windows for a really long time. And I'm not really sure why you can't do it in Mac OS yet, but this lets you do it and it really comes in handy. I've also started using a tool called Tooth Fairy. Now I use AirPods every day, but I always seem to have issues when I wanna switch the connection to my Mac. And this app makes it a lot easier. I can create a keyboard command to automatically make the switch and that's really all I have to do. I don't have to go into a menu or change any settings. It still doesn't work every single time. I think this is more just an AirPods and Mac problem, but it makes it much easier still. So those are really all the apps and utilities I have installed. There's not that many, but I also wanted to cover some of the websites I use because for me, the web is what I mainly do on my Mac. Now I've covered this in a few other videos, but I still get the question every single day. And that's where do I get my wallpapers? I mainly use a website called Unsplash. This is a place where you can get images for pretty much anything and they're all free to use, but they make for amazing wallpapers. And I'll leave the one that I'm currently using on my Mac down below in the description, so go check that out if you want it. Okay, so that brings us to another service and also today's sponsor, Hostinger. If you wanna have a website hosted for some of the lowest prices out there, this is the place to look. You can get prices of less than $10 a month. That is crazy cheap, and you also get the reliability you would want when looking for a web host with over 99.9% .9 uptime. Plus, you get emails included and you can easily create a website with their easy website builder. This will let you sign up, create a website, and get up and running in just minutes. You can also choose from cloud hosting services, which will allow you to get a dedicated machine and free domain name registration when you sign up. Now, what makes all of this better for you, my viewers, is you can get 15% off with the code MATTG. This takes that already excellent pricing and makes it even lower. If you're in the market for a new hosting platform, Hostinger has you covered. And I'll leave a link down in the description where you can get this great price. So go check it out. 
I also love to visit these product aggregator sites like Gear Patrol and Uncrate. This is pretty much where I go to daydream about products that are usually way too expensive to ever actually buy, but they look great and honestly I just use it as inspiration for some of the work that I do. So that is what's on my MacBook Pro. It is a workhorse, it's powerful, it's portable, it does everything that I need it to do. So I'm wondering why I ever try to go away from it.